posted on the same one. Okay. Hey! Hey, Floss Tube! Hey, Floss Tube! Jen and Teresa back for our second video. Sleepover! So, yes. So, you want to kind of, I'm going to let her handle this. So okay. I an introduction. So, what are, you, what, are, what are our plans? Okay, so we've got some di different plans for this, this episode. We're going to start with questions like we did last time, which I think were well received. Um, there are 20 questions just like last time. 10 of them are about stitching, and 10 of them are just kind of general, like personality questions. And then we've got some stash to share, some whips to share, and some finishes to share, and then just like a few odds and ends. So yeah. we're just going to kind of wing it. We have things all over. We have things everywhere to show, so hopefully we'll get to all of it. So. Okay, so we're going to start with question number one, which is what chart do you have that you know you're never going to stitch? Where'd I put it? Crinkle, crinkle. Oh, there it is. Okay. This is mine. It is the Mexican schoolgirl practice from Samplers Remembered. Can they see it? Yep. Mm -hmm. And it. I got this at, I think it was the 2015 mm -hmm. um, market. Market. And it was really pretty. I saw the original. Right. And I what got me is that little calico in the middle. Yeah, super She's cute. She's so cute. So you bought it and you liked the original and but now like why don't you think you'll stitch it um it's really big and i've got a lot of other really big pieces that i like more and i just probably won't stitch it. i just need to challenge i mean i need to make a challenge and just say yeah, like i challenge you to finish this in, in week, two weeks so. okay mine is the one and i it's this one birds of a feather and it's the um la tome which is autumn and um, it's part of a four-part series by Birds of a Feather. I remember one year at market, this one coming out, Le Printemps, which is spring. And it was super unusual. No one was doing anything like this at the time. What's it called? Le Printemps. Okay. Which is the spring. They're all named after a season. And I remember seeing it and, like, thinking, I, that's ugly, but I kind of like it. Like, it was interesting to me. And I think it was just that it was so unusual and no it's one was really... It's pretty ugly. It's... Yeah, I mean, she's kind of misshapen. And, it, like I said, at the time, the style was very different. Yeah. And then she came out with um, Lete, which is um, summer. Oop, getting some glare, which is very pretty. And then she came out with Live, which is winter, which has got some pretty poinsettias. That's pretty. And then there was like nothing for a while. And then the autumn one came out. And it's just the colors in the rest of these are very muted. And this one is just kind of the colors are bright. It's yeah. like orange and aqua and navy and. I like the piece. I, I like, like the piece. I think you could change the color. You'd have to change the colors. And I think that's part of why I haven't really started the series is just that I don't know what I'm going to do with that one. Or even just muted colors of what she's using. So right. Like the hair yeah. So like the, the hair could be done in kind of a ginger color, you know, like a whatever. It's just, I don't know. Yeah. I might do it. And the thing is like, even though it's a fairly large piece, it's not a lot of stitching because it's yeah. just outlines. Okay. Cute. Um, celebrity crush. Brad Pitt. What is it about Brad? I think... I like the shape of his face because it's very similar to the shape of Hobby's face. Mm -hmm. Hobby's my husband. That's his real name. A lot of people think it's that like, I'm, I'm calling him Hubby, but it's Hobby. Um, he's pretty. He, he's just pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is Harrison Ford circa second Indiana Jones movie. It was not a good movie. When he takes his shirt off in that movie, <laughs> it's like, oh, the angels sing. So... Like, manly, handsome, like, smart archaeologist, adventurer, funny, fearless, vulnerable, like, yeah. perfect. Perfect, I'm perfect, all perfect. about the looks. <laughs> what do you like? Because he looks good. He's good looking. Yeah. Okay, what is your favorite thing about stitching? I think it's the, um, the chance to just not have to think too much and just be able to repetitive just do a repetitive thing and then you turn out with something gorgeous so yeah i i developed this question but i i don't know that i can really like put it into words there's something about like like the feel of it the textures and like just the the process of it kind of the same kind of the same yeah. thing like the process of it and the laying down and you start with nothing and you gradually see something develop and it like the way thread looks on fabric yeah. It's so pretty. And that's why we're always all saying like, oh, this the picture on this chart doesn't do it justice. No, yeah. It never, ever does. It never does. Yeah. You never see a chart where you're like, that looks exactly like the, <laughs> that's just as pretty as the, and there's something about like just the way light hits 
floss when it's in X's mm -hmm. and different stitches that it's yeah. just pretty amazing. Plus the fact that it's such an old art yeah, it is or a craft. Old art. I mean, when you read about, you know, Mary Queen of Scots, that was one of the things that she was known for was yeah. her stitching. Yeah. So that's been exciting too, to think you're doing something that yeah. is very old. Um, um, so also deep thought, um, what's your favorite cereal? Um, my favorite cereal is Great Grains with the raisins, dates, and pecans. <laughs> Are you like 80? <laughs> yeah. That sounds like when a very 80-year-old cereal. You know the boxes, you, you know, you get the little yeah. boxes. <laughs> the just tiny little My cereals. grandmother would buy those. Like with and Fruit I would Loops be like, and... Product 19 is <laughs> And all the other kids are like, all right. All right, I'll <laughs> take the Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> That's funny. Mine, so when I was little, there was a cereal called Buckwheats. Okay. And it was a flake, like a corn flake, but it was made out of buckwheat. Mm -hmm. And so they were kind of a dark brown, but they were like slightly sweetened. And mm -hmm. I wish they still made that cereal. It was so good. Then later, there was an oatmeal apple crisp. And they still yeah. make the app, the oatmeal crisp cereals, but yeah. they got rid of the apple one. But I love yeah, the I apple like one. It. And now, what's my favorite cereal? You know what's really good, and maybe this is cheating, is um, rolled oats, mm -hmm. like rolled oatmeal, where you cook it. Yeah. And it's like, it's not flattened oatmeal like the little disc that's like cut steel into cut. tiny. Yeah, the steel cut oats. Yeah. I'd say that's I've funny. been eating oatmeal this past week for breakfast, and I'm trying to, I get on these kicks where I'm like, I've got too many things in my pantry. I need to get rid of some of these things. So I've been making oatmeal and I cook, when I'm cooking the oatmeal, I'm putting in uh, sunflower seeds and um, dried cranberries, mm. um, sugar in the raw, just yeah. a little bit, and then cinnamon. But that is so good. Really? Yeah. Mm. Love it. Okay, when you're working on a stitching project and you've got like a big block of color, like let's say a house or a big vegetable or something, and you've got to stitch on with one color and a big block all at one time, do you love that or do you hate it? It doesn't bother me. I don't love it, but it doesn't bother me. When I'm doing a house, if I can get all of the background mm -hmm. parts done, then I feel like I've almost finished. Because to me, the, the windows and the doors right. are fast. Yeah. So... But it doesn't bother me. What I was, I, I like it. And it's kind of the same reason. Like if you get some elements done and you can just like motor stitch, like yeah. just boo -doo -boo -doo -boo -doo -boo -doo -doo. I was, um, took a trip to Minnesota and I was just telling Jennifer this today that I, um, took a Brenda Gervais piece and it was, um, the thankful, what is it? Thankful, grateful, grateful blessed thankful or something. Blessed. Yeah. And it has a house in the middle and I had already done the roof and the windows and every, and the door and everything. And so I just was sitting at a cell phone charging station, stitching just filling in the part and the lady next to me goes are you making that up as you go yeah <laughs> and I said no 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 I just I know where I'm going but I I kind of like you know like I like stitching fancy that pieces and she kind of had big blocks of color yeah. and sometimes it's just like you can just stitch 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 and you're not fist you know fiddling around with yeah changing colors and stuff um who is your favorite band or singer I like James Taylor yeah he's awesome yeah. James Taylor and I have the same birthday oh that's yeah. neat yeah that's cool um I, my, my family thinks I'm weird because I love what is it the the um, sensitive songwriter. I like the singer songwriters so, too. So, so cool. I'll listen to James Taylor. Yeah, James Taylor is good. I I don't like all the Beatles music. That's okay. But I love George Harrison. Yeah, he's, he's my really favorite. Good. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like. I really am a big John Mayer fan. Yeah. He's very talented, and he's really cute, but he's very talented, and I like, he did uh, he did an album with a trio where they did, like, blues, and mm -hmm. it was so good, but I like Sting, and... I love Sting. Yeah. He has the best voice. I mean, his is a very unique, unique mm -hmm. voice. There's but he's not... a great songwriter, too. I love um, Bono from U2 as well. Paul Simon, I really yeah, like. Paul Simon. Yeah, I love, we were just talking about him, my son... A song came on, and he was like, I thought this was Simon and Garfunkel. I'm like, this is Simon, Paul mm -hmm. Simon. And he's like, oh, and then we talked about that he likes the rhythm. Mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah, yeah. He's really into drums, so. Cool. So we like kind of the same music, too. Yeah. What's your favorite specialty stitch? I like, I don't know what it's called. I guess it may be a queen stitch. The one where it's like. Yeah. Like and this, and it's. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's one. a tricky stitch. A lot of people hate those. Really? Yeah. But when you see, like, there are old samplers where. It's completely nothing but queen stitches. Oh, and they really? fill in. It almost looks like a needle point, but mm -hmm. it's all queen stitches. Yeah. And I like, I guess, what's the Jessica stitch where you're stitching kind of the edges and then it ends up looking like a circle? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that one too because there's some um, 
in the turnicotone pieces that I've done, it's supposed to look like a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I know what you're talking about. But I like that one too. What about you? I like um, the four sided stitch, oh, okay. especially when it goes like straight across because it's just, it's like a, you do this, you do this, you do this, and you're on to the next one. And it's all, I can do it all from the top. And it's almost like creating a chain. Yeah. Um, but I love eyelets. Yeah. Yeah. Like an eyelet alphabet. Yeah, those so are beautiful. So beautiful. They're a little fiddly, but the finished result is it's so pretty. It's worth it. Yeah. Um, what is the best thing that you cook? I, my boys love it when I cook. Um, their favorite thing that I cook is probably a... Uh, ratatouille which is strange because you wouldn't think that they would like right. that but they love my ratatouille which is a vegetarian dish and then my younger son loves when I make black bean enchiladas. I was just gonna say your black bean enchiladas and it's crazy. They're the easiest things and I mean it's just black beans onion tortillas and then I I use store-bought green enchilada sauce and I make two pans because my younger son eats a whole pan oh my gosh and then we eat the other one he loves black bean enchiladas so I am a master of Thanksgiving dinner oh really like I just have got it down to a science I've got everything timed everything comes together at the same moment we start with Ina Gardens she's got an herb dip and whiskey sours with real like we squeeze all the lemons mm -hmm. and limes that morning and then um, I make homemade pies. The crusts are homemade. I do an oh. apple pie and two pumpkin pies. I do Ina Garten's cranberry conserve recipe that's, you know, apples and yeah. um, nuts and cranberries. And oh, I want that recipe. It's so good. It if you can find it online too. Okay. But um, it was on the one, back of one of my Jenny Bean patterns, one of the little ones. Oh, okay. The recipe's on there. Um, but I just like, it's, I make stuffing, um, but from scratch, yeah. I use like actual bread and I, I toast it and then I wet it and then I tear it up and it's got a bunch of herbs and spices and things. It's just, it's cream on top. Oh. So good. Yeah. And we oh. make it actually three times a year. We have usually in August, I'll make Thanksgiving dinner and then I make it again at Thanksgiving and then we usually have it again at Christmas. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we don't, I, I've, I've cooked Thanksgiving dinner the whole thing one time when we, we lived in Houston and we didn't put, we weren't able to come home for Thanksgiving, but ours you know, our whole this family. Year. I mean, our Thanksgiving now is yeah. over mm -hmm. 100 people at my house. And it's crazy. It's everybody brings. But it's share. fun. It's fun. Yeah, so, totally. Um, I have to, one other thing that's one of my <laughs> best recipes that my boys would be upset if I didn't mention are these banana muffins that I make. They're, they're supposed to be banana cupcakes. But um, I got it out of the Cooking Like magazine. Yeah. And it was for me when I was on some weird diet yeah. that I was doing. <laughs> and um, the boys loved it. And I've made those banana cupcakes since I don't know I mean probably 1999 or something cool and when I make them they're gone the boys eat they them just all. eat them all and we have some family that their kids come and stay with us at Christmas they haven't come come over in a while but I they expect banana muffins on Christmas morning yeah so those is are there buttermilk in them or no but yogurt oh, okay so but you could put buttermilk in there instead what how has have your stitching tastes changed over time um a lot. I mean, when I first started t stitching as a, like, 19-year-old, it was a lot of leisure arts, you know, Santa Clauses. I stitched a lot of Santa Clauses in Paula Vaughn. Sure. And now I stitch more primitive stuff. Right. So, it's, it's changed a lot. I don't, I probably would not have stitched a real sampler if I have not, had not started hanging out with Teresa. Yeah, that's so. true. Because, I mean, I even remember the point at which Jennifer was like, I think I might try sampler yeah. and I was like I think you should yeah. they're really fun to stitch because I mean I've done the Mill Hill sampler mm -hmm. thing but that's not exactly the same thing so no but yeah um I started off like a lot of people you know just kind of with what was available and I did of course my fair share of precious moments yeah um cross stitch pieces and you know kind of did I've done lavender and lace and when I, once I started doing the Shepherd's Bush kits, um, I liked that they came with silks. That was my first introduction to silks. It was my first introduction to specialty stitches. Yeah. Kind of my first introduction to band samplers. And it kind of like progressed from there. Like for me, Shepherd's, the Shepherd's Bush kits were kind of a turning point where it kind of flipped me towards something more yeah. historic, something. And I still like, like the Shepherd's Bush pieces. I still like stitching those. I, that's one thing I can remember looking at a lot in the cross stitch magazines are those band samplers mm -hmm. with the pull threads I guess mm -hmm. and things like that I always wanted to try those and never did you should. should they're fun um 
What is the girliest thing about you? We are not, so we're not girly girls. No. We really aren't. No. Um, I don't know. I mean, girly, girly. I know I had a hard time with this too because I was like, and then I was like, I like for my bra and panties to match. That's girly. Yeah, that's fair. Girly. I don't like yard work. Okay. And I don't mind getting dirty. I worked in an animal shelter, but I just feel like ew, oh, right. like kind of prickly and dirt under my fingernails, and I'm sweaty. Yeah, I don't like to sweat either. I don't mind sweating even. I sweat at work. I don't and, like to sweat, but I don't like yard work. I don't mind working outside, but if it's hot, that bothers me. Yeah. And that's pretty bad in the South. So. I will say, though, that... So, like, for two weeks a year, I'll do yard work. So. We... One thing that's girly about the two of us is I feel that we're both very domestic. Yeah. That we, you know, cook, clean, care for our families. I guess families. my stitching is probably the probably. girliest thing about me. That I love to girl yeah. do crafts things. But which yeah. Is, I mean, if you... Yeah, that's true. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, framing tip. Give everybody a framing tip. We, we are both... Had started off, you know, some of our first jobs were in picture framing. And yeah. so we both still do most of our picture framing on our own. Yeah. And so what's a tip you'd give One people? One thing that I, if you're doing your own framing that I found, I've learned this recently, is the idea of pulling that, figure out where you want the fabric to fold over the um, piece of foam core, and then pull the thread. And that way you can line it up, especially with linen. I wish I would have learned that a long time yeah. ago because linen's really hard. Um, and my thing is, is to measure your pieces and keep a record of that. So when you're at the thrift stores, you can start looking for mm -hmm. those weird size frames. Right. Yeah. So. I would, I have two also, two tips. One is, um, I, my, the backs of my pieces are not super neat and we'll get to that in a minute. But if you want to hide your sins, yeah. <laughs> um, get a piece, piece, your framer to cut you a piece of mat board and, and you can get acid free. But a mat board that is kind of the color of your fabric. Um, don't go too dark, but don't. And the thing is, when you put white foam core behind yeah. a piece, and then you've got threads that are carried or like tails that are sticking out, they'll show. And if you put a like a neutral color underneath that, they just all disappear. And then the other tip is get a brad gun. Like it is one of the handiest. If you're a, yeah. if you're a, if you are I'll a stitcher, do you have one? Yeah. So well, I've got. A Fletcher point, which is similar, but you can get a yeah, you can get a point gun. A point gun. Oh, you can get a Hobby Lobby. You can get a point gun or a Brad gun. I have a yellow Brad gun um, that I've had a long time. It was kind of expensive. I, I suppose now you can get it on Amazon or eBay, but um, you basically just load either little points or little nails in, and it's a way for you to yeah. This and this is very much like the one I have. And then this is I've had this since I was in mm -hmm. college. So this is from Fletcher. You can order them online, and this is from Logan. Yeah, but this was at Hobby Lobby. And, and you can use your 40% off coupon. Yeah. And then that's how you keep your pieces in the frame. You just go around the edge and, and put this, this little oh, <laughs> shot right into the, <laughs> to the chair. chair. And it just makes the little brad. Yeah. And it just pushes it in and it'll keep your piece in there. It's, it's like very, very strong. It's very strong. <laughs> it will shoot right into we, your wooden chair. At the first frame shot I worked at, I worked with this crazy girl named Shelly. And she was young and just kind of silly. And she had a brad gun one day and she was walking past Jill and she just went... Like that yeah. with the brag on and shot one into her leg, on the into her leg, but yeah. she didn't know. Like she was just being, she just yeah. thought it would just like bounce off. So, but that's a, a great tool to have. Um, what is a quality that you admire in a person? Um, honesty and just being genuine. Mm -hmm. I think those two. I'm, you know, it's really hard. Which uh, go hand in hand. If you're not genuine, you're not being honest. But those are two very important characteristics. I like people to be who they are and not worrying about whether or not I'm going to like what that is. That's my problem. That's not their problem. Right. I like people who are smart in the way in, in that they have like gone through life and learned things from their experiences. Maybe they've read books or they've just had experiences and they've, they've learned that, but then that they are, I really like people who are kind, yeah. like who are just genuinely nice people. That's important right. to me. Um, how important is a neat back to you when you're stitching? Like scale of one to 10, 10 being like, it is so utterly important. And one being, I don't care one bit. Eight. If I'm stitching. Okay. Eight. And if I'm having to frame it and people are going to complain later, I would really like them to be neat, but I'll frame whatever they want me to. I'm going to say mine is like a three, really? maybe a four. Like it's, I've never had a neat back and 
that's why I have that tip about putting the dark <laughs> thing behind. I just, when I learned to stitch, no one taught me. And yeah. so I started, you know, and I would first use knots to hold my thread in place. But then I was, I read somewhere like, oh, if you have knots, like it's going to make the front of your piece look bumpy. So then I would just like hold the tail of my thread, pull it through until there was like maybe, you know, a quarter of an inch. And then once I, once I went, finished that X, then I could just go because it was held in place by the X. Mm -hmm. And so I have like threads all over the back of my piece. And it's just, I've, I've done it. I've yeah. done neat backs. I don't enjoy it. And so I just don't do it. I like mine. And that was because my mom. You know? Yeah, that's what you said. She'd make you pick it out. Yeah, if you didn't do it neatly. Um, what is another career that you might have pursued? I would have probably gone into culinary arts if I thought about it. I don't know, though, because, I mean, I love to cook, but mm -hmm, yeah. it is a high-pressure that's, That's a high-pressure career. Yep. And Unless you're like... I don't know. I mean, I've, I'm very kind of, hi, my name's Jennifer sometimes, but if you come up to me and you're a jerk to me, I'm like, I can handle that. Yeah. So, but I probably would have been fine in a, in a kitchen, but I don't know if I would have loved it as much. But I just love to try foods. So maybe if I could have been a food critic. Yeah. That would have yeah, been Yeah, that would have been great. So. I would have been an archaeologist maybe. When I was young, like eight... Even before Indiana Jones came out, yeah. I just thought archaeology was so interesting. And not I'm not super interested in dinosaurs, but I love reading about Egypt and yeah. like colonial America and when they go on these digs. It's like a treasure hunt. Like so you're real archaeology, for, real archaeology, real archaeology, yeah. right? Um, I just think it's it's very interesting. Yeah. But it's not. I mean, that's a tough career. I work with a, an anthropologist, and she's so funny. Um, she's an anthropologist, so she's interested in kind of the the human mm -hmm. aspect and not necessarily old, but just not, you know, it's just the evolution of human. And she is, she gets so frustrated with what people think anthropology is. Oh. And she's like, bones, <laughs> that show has ruined anthropology. <laughs> like, but people want to be anthropologists because of bones. So. Okay. What is, what was your favorite piece to stitch ever? And I don't mean like you think it turned out the prettiest, but like you just super enjoyed the, the stitching of it like that it was fun to you. And have I shown this in one of my floss tubes? I don't know. I don't think I have. We're gonna, you're gonna see it again. So. If I have, it's um. Oh, don't let your blue ribbon get in the way. Yeah. <laughs> this is the I'll, anniversaries of the heart. I think I showed this in the last video. I, I don't know. Did you? But here it is again. If she did, it's very I did, very pretty. I did do a video and deleted it because, like I said, that's true. Lies. I don't think you did show it. But look at how pretty that is. She and did it on, on forty count. count. And so this is all like this over one stuff. And then tell them about the... So every, you know, it was a monthly series. How do I do this? And so for each month, I put the date, the initials and the date from somebody in my family. So it has my, my husband's and our kids, the my parents and my siblings, my husband's parents and his siblings, our grandparents, and then I have my nieces and, um, yeah, my niece and nephews. And um, February, oh my goodness, our family loves to have babies in February. It was hard to find them. And that's a pretty full block. Is it this, that's this one. That one. So it has my birth date, my grandmother's birth date, my husband's grandfather's birth date, three of the kids, and then I think um, my sister-in-law. Jeez. Got them all in there. So. Yeah, super pretty. She won a blue ribbon. Yes, but one of our grandparents, we could never find them. A wedding anniversary day. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Not wow. on my side of the family. Uh -oh. <laughs> so. But she has all those charts in her shop too, yes. I think. I do all the snow garden I'm trying to get in stock. So Okay, she's trying to get snow garden, but she's got the rest of the charts. Yeah. It's very, very pretty. It is. And it was fun to stitch. It was a lot of fun to stitch. Lots not a lot of color changes within each block, but just enough variation to make the whole piece look really good. Well and I suppose, you know, for you it was also just thinking about your family members yeah. while you were stitching it too. So, and I did, I did get a blue ribbon. She got a blue ribbon. At the state fair. Woo! At the state fair in Mississippi. And that's all you get. You don't get grand champion. You don't get grand champion. Thank you. Okay, this this is was one of my favorite pieces to stitch, and it is a shepherd's bush. And look how big it is. <laughs> it's super big. This piece was really fun to stitch. It's called the Earth Gatherers, and it came as a kit. And it was a $65 kit at the time. And I stitched this in like 19... Nine, it probably says 19, 97 is when I finished it. And it came with the linen and the 
all the baubles and the, all the DMC flosses. And then this is the Jill Rensel mat that goes with it. And, and the frame I got done at, I don't remember, Michael's. I wasn't working at a frame shop when I got this framed. So pretty. The, the border um, of the piece is all, it's like heart, star, flower, square. <laughs> And it just was super fun to like work my way around the border and it's got this really cool silhouette of a like a little farm village mm -hmm. in the back. Oh, the little windmill. Yeah, it's just like her little outfit has got, you know, is checkered and there just was so much variation and so many little components that it really was just super, super fun to stay. It is. When you sit and look at it, it gets cuter and cuter with the bees and I love these little charms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, I know I've seen it on eBay. Oh, look at the little... I know, super cute. That is adorable. And this, of course, hung in my shop for a long, long time, and now it's in my hallway right up against my bedroom. So I, I still really like that. It was very fun to stitch. So tell us about this mat. I want to know more. I know I should know more about the mat, but the mat. Okay, so the matting? Yeah. So Jill Rensel is amazing. She does the framing for Shepherd's Bush, and you can her, the name of her sh um, frame shop is Jill Rensel Studio. And she's kind of like the exclusive framer for Shepherd's Bush, and so when you see their patterns, she just will make a million of them and she keeps them all the mats and frames in stock oh, okay. and so you can call her and say i need the mat and the frame for beekeeper's cottage and she'll send it to you and they're amazing they're hand painted and she does use i believe now she uses um a computerized mat cutter for some of some of it mm -hmm. I, I know she used to hand cut a lot of it wow but they're really reasonable i think they're very reasonably priced for what you get a lot of times it's a quadruple or a quintuple yeah. mat with hand painting and hand cutting and she uses acid-free materials and her frame. And so you can call her. She's very, very nice. Okay. Very nice. And she will frame other things, too. A lot of, like, a Paulette Stewart from Plum Street, I know, has used her to frame, like, her personal things. Okay. And I think Jill has a blog where she shows some of the neat needlework that she kind of specializes in framing needlework. And she takes, where you can send she? her in Utah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what kind of a cookie are you? This, I've been thinking about this one. I should know this. I think I'm probably a, um, what is the, it's got to be a cookie. I'm probably a granola bar. Yeah, you kind of are granola -y. Because I'm really earthy. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, simple, but then, I don't know, got a lot of nuts. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to You're like it. healthy. Yeah. I have to edit that part out. <laughs> I've, I've been thinking about it too. We were just talking about it because I was talking about it with, at, you know, at work. I was asking some of the people at work what kind of cookie they were. I feel like I'm probably, it's got to be something kind of lopsided and very homemade looking mm -hmm. and like kind of unusual. Um, what kind of cookie would I be? I'm definitely not like a macaroon um, or like a lace cookie. And I don't really like chocolate chip cookies. Really? I, I like... I love chocolate chip cookies. The America's Test Kitchen has the best recipe for chocolate chip chewy cookies, and I love those. But otherwise, I'm like... I don't know. I think they're just... None of them are good yeah. enough for me, is what it is. I think I really actually like chocolate chip cookies, yeah. but they... I love chocolate chip cookies. Might be... You know, maybe I'm kind of like, like a decorated cookie, yeah. but where it's... I don't know. I said she was like a Milano... But like slightly askew. Yeah, like slightly <laughs> not. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Nope, no, no problem. Sally. Gotta let Sally out. The phone, I guess. Move along, puppy. Okay. So when you're looking at patterns, like if you go to market or if you're shopping online, what quality about a pattern are you just a sucker for? Like if it's got this element or this element, or you know, it could be like a color or a design element or a shape or a subject matter or. Like, are you just like, oh, I love that. I love pumpkin head people, apparently. <laughs> I did not realize that until Michelle of the Stripe Rose made a comment, and then I was looking at all of these patterns that I have. That, so if it has um, a pumpkin, a bird, or a rabbit, I'll probably like it. Yeah. Yeah. Pumpkin, a bird, rabbit. Yeah. I am a sucker for... I, I love stitching alphabets, yeah. and if it's an eyelet alphabet, it's so beautiful. Yeah. And I love a good house. Yeah. Um, but it's got to be a good one. Sometimes houses are like, mm. if it's real historic looking, I like a house with a lot of windows, like a big white house or a big off-white yeah. house, um, and the color red, yeah, like a primitive true. kind of red. Love that. I like peacocks and bees as well. Mm-hmm. 
peacocks, probably weird looking peacocks. Stacy Nash peacock. Yeah, they're cool. And I don't like things that are symmetrical. I yeah. like if I like things that are fun to stitch where it's lots of, like this one. Like <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. So we had a where, do, technical. Do we know issue. where we do we know where we left off? Was it what scares you? What scares you? Okay, so what okay. what scares you? Um, I do not like new things because if I'm not, I, that's what makes me most anxious. Mm -hmm. Like I have to go on a trip with the honors student, my honors class this semester to Atlanta, and it's freaking me out because I don't know exactly what I'm going to do every minute, and that just totally freaks me out. But and snakes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not afraid of snakes. I'm just joking. So. Um, I would say, I I. What scares me is somebody being really angry with me, mm -hmm. and I think it's just kind of like that loss of control, where yeah. it's like, how am I going to fix this? And then you start doing like, the, I'm a terrible person. Oh. Um, somebody being really super super angry, and then getting eaten by a shark would be terrible. Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't like being I, in the ocean. I talked about going scuba diving in my last video, and the whole time I was in the water, I was never afraid of anything. I mean, we were swimming around with barracuda Oof. around us and everything, and it was just like, oh, that is the coolest fish ever. And then I get out of the water, I'm like, what was I thinking? <laughs> but I'm more afraid of what's going to happen to somebody else. I mean, um, like, when we went to on a band trip to Mexico, don't go on a band trip to Mexico, parents. Anyway. We went on a cruise with our band, and the kids were out swimming in just off the beach. But it was, in, and I was freaked out because I couldn't control what was going to happen, and that just bugs me. So since having children, I've been more yeah. anxious. Everybody understands that. So. Um, okay, so the the last stitching question is: What on earth am I going to do with this piece of fabric? And we all like to collect fabric, and sometimes you buy a piece, and you're like. This is so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, you get it home and you have it for like three years. And then eventually you come across it and you're like, what was I thinking? Yeah. So what's your, what's your piece? Okay. Mine is a funny story. Cause when Teresa asked me this over the phone, I said, Oh, I know exactly which one I'm going to show. And <laughs> she did. She was like, Oh, I know which one it is. And it's the silk weaver. It's blush. It's 40 count and it's pink. But apparently I did know what to do with it. Yeah. She had started something on it already. And it's really and It's going to actually be really pretty. So, and it looks pretty. It's it's blushy pinky. Yeah. But it's kind of it's almost like strawberry like a pale strawberry ice cream yeah. maybe or and it's that set Sima Street. And I think it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be super pretty. cute. So yeah. that's one thing. But then I'm so like So then actually she had to find. But it is tells you something about me. It's mm -hmm. like I know and then I changed my mind. Um I'm doing the hand dyed by Stephanie um Fabric Fabric of the month. Mm -hmm. And so I'm doing 40 count. So I'm getting things like this. And when you think of 40 count, you think of things like samplers. Right. Not a sampler color. And then there's this one. I love them, but what am I going to stitch on them? Super pretty. So I pulled so, these out and I had them sitting on the bed and I went and I brought up a pattern that I got, that she just really got. recently. And I'm like, I will stitch this <laughs> on this. And it'll be super cute. Isn't that cute. Have y'all seen this? I saw it on Tracy P's. One of her videos, and I'm like, paused it, took a picture of it, and called Teresa and said, we need this. It's by Soda Stitch, and it's all in DMC. Isn't that cute? Super cute. And um, Brittany from, uh, what is her, she has the best name, Ingleside Imaginarium is stitching it, and she turned this little guy into Buster, Emily C's cat, who if you haven't met Buster, he's the cutest cat. He's very pretty. But she did a wonderful job converting that to a flame tip Siamese, cool. so impressive. And then that's going to be Dharma. <laughs> Emily sees other cat. That's so cute. I might copy her. Okay, that's mine. Okay, so that was hers. Okay, this is mine. I I think Silk Weaver has a Facebook page, and I don't do Facebook much anymore. I just it's easy to get sucked in. Yeah. And I just don't do it. And it's not that I don't enjoy seeing people and things. It's just I just it's a time suck. Yeah. So, but anyway, they have a Facebook page, and then they had for a while anyway. They had this thing where it was like they it'd be like, oh, it's six o'clock. Here's a one of a kind piece. First person to say they want it gets it right, and so I would watch, and sometimes I'd see things that I'm like, oh, I would have liked that, but you know. And so then one day they post this one, and I'm like, mine. I got it, you know, just because like I want, I wanted to win for once. So I got this piece of fabric, and it's pretty big. It's like 36 inches, probably by 13. You know, it's probably a skinny quarter or whatever. 
but it's pretty wild. I don't, this is the only, like when I was looking through my fabric to answer this question, I don't have any other fabric that looks like this. And I, I it's cool though. You could do one of those bothy thread fairy tale pieces. Yeah. That would be really neat, like the Hansel and Gretel, because this has that feel of like yeah. the forest and everything. Yeah. Or like um, the mermaid from Courtney Collection. Yeah. Yeah. I think the bothy thread, because to me this looks like a forest. Yeah, it's kind of foresty. But for a while, I think I'm just going to enjoy that I have it. You design something. <laughs> no, because then everybody will be like, where did you get the fabric? Yeah. I have the only one. <laughs> Suffer. So, anyway, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Yeah. But it's not that I don't like it. It's just it's I true. don't know what I'm going to do with it. Yeah. Okay, last of the personal questions. What would be the first thing that you would buy if you won the lottery? I wouldn't buy anything I'd pay off my debt. I'm sorry. Once again, are you 80? <laughs> I would. I'm I would a granola bar. <laughs> I like grainy cereal and I would pay off my debt. <laughs> I would. I would. And then a new car. I would buy my husband a sports car. Really? He loves cars and we just don't really have enough money to swing getting him the kind of car that he would so enjoy. And I would love to just like have one of those, you know, like the big bow on top of the car. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like. Jingle yeah. the keys and be like, honey, come out to the driveway. That would be, that sweet. Would be so fun. Okay, that's the end of our get to know us questions. 20 more questions so you know us better. Yes. Let's have a palate cleanser. So this is going to be just like a, a story of one of the things we did. Yeah. You know, early on in our relationship. we There's a, a website called um, Moda Bake Shop. Yeah. And if you haven't been there, it's really, really cool. It's um, people can submit quilting or fabric patterns. And then they kind of judge them. And then if you're deemed to be like the quality's good, they'll put the pattern up and then photos. And it's almost like a blog post, but you get like the complete instructions and the names of the fabric. Yeah. And it's very, very professionally lots done. Lots and lots of ideas. Lots of ideas. And it's anything from blankets to stuffed toys to aprons to, you know, little bags, bags and just anything. And they're really cute ideas. Very talented people. It's free I have a little binder with some that I've printed off, things that mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that's cool. So I see this this project, and we're going to be getting together for, for a get-together, and I'm like, Jennifer, we have to make this. It was on Moda Bake Shop. Now, it's the only thing I've ever made for Moda Bake Shop so far, even though I have all of these very pretty things. It is a tool that allows you to bring your bread home from the grocery store without crushing it. <laughs> and I had this fabric. And I can't remember this fabric designer's name, but I have collected some of her fabric. It's very cute. Oh, that is. I and just has, realized that's a cat. It's all cooking cats. He's got yes. pancakes. How cute is he? That is cute. And it's all these baking things. And so it Velcros shut. And then there's mat board inside. And so you can, you can, you know, close it up and fold it out. And it makes a square tube to put your, ooh, it stinks in there, to put your bread in so that you can get it home from the grocery store without it. And then you can put this, I think you can, you know, you can Velcro that. And then that way your bread doesn't get crushed. <laughs> and we each made one of those. And I made one for she, my mother. She, oh, you did you make two? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we made three of these. <laughs> bread savers. My This is, ugh. Anyway, Lisha at the time was like, you guys are never going <laughs> to use those. And we were like, yes, we are. <laughs> Be quiet. These are cute. I not one time have ever used it. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> okay. But anyway. I still have it. But, it's in, in, and it's a memory. Yeah. It's a memory. Maybe we'll all come up with some other use for it. But it really is kind of sad. Because it took a lot. It was a, kind of a futzy project. A, so you had to sew everything yeah. and these little things. Had oh, to I know. You had to, and they, they slip out so you can wash them. So yeah. Oh, no, that's you right. closed yours. I, I think I closed mine in. So it's... It I is, didn't because the instructions said not to. Okay. So. Well, I didn't follow the instructions. <laughs> anyway, super weird story. Okay. Um... Let's. Um, I have a finish. Okay. Like show yeah, oh yeah. Let's I do finishes. Finished this. I finished it. She finished it today. The summer splendor from Little House Needlework. Super cute. And I, on my last video, I said I was going to finish it, and I did. Now, what am I going to do with it after I finish it? I don't know. I was thinking either make a pillow out of it, but then again, I might make one of those mounted, like like flat fold kind like of things, flat like fold on things. it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So. Cool. Do you have any she, other finishes? You you. 
She does a lot of videos, though, so you kind of keep people up on what you're doing. Oh, yeah, that was cute. So one night, okay, I've talked about the fact that my dad had a stroke, and then we had to take turns staying with him at night, and so sometimes late at night, you go online and shop on your cell phone. So I was at Hershner's, and I ordered a bunch of crafts, (laughs) including this. Have y'all seen these before? I loved these kind of kits when I was a kid. It's just a piece of styrofoam. Is that right? Yeah. And then you um, it's like you uh, sequins, sequins and, and pins. pins. And I got it. It's a set of three, and I finished two of them. They're cute, though. It's cute. I keep moving it out of frame. So, Hershner's, it was on sale. Oh! I just broke it. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. Well. I have some finishes too. Um, I have kind of gotten really back into stitching this year. And so I had some things um, that, you know, were nearly finished. This was one of them. It is called um, Pelouse Inter D, which it means keep off the grass in French. And it was a Mouton Rouge kit that I bought at a, at a market a long time ago with Sue when we went. It was a consumer market. And it was a French kit, and at the time it was fifty dollars. Yeah. And all, and it was it was cute. It's very cute. It came with white fabric, and DMC floss and a chart for fifty dollars. Wow. And I bought it from the Cedar Hill lady, who was very very nice. And I expressed an interest in it, and she only had like one or two of them. And I said, "How much is that?" And she said fifty. And I was like, "Oh dear. Okay, let me think about it." And then I bought Sue a sandwich, and I took it to her, and she was like. I don't eat sandwiches. <laughs> like she just was like, is there mayonnaise on that? And I was like, mm-hmm. She was like, mm-mm. Yeah. So I took it over to the Cedar Hill lady, not to bribe her, but just to be like, hey, would you like a sandwich? Because she was by herself. I said, would you like a sandwich? I bought one for Sue and she, she would not like it. And so she was like, oh, thank you very much. So then at the end of the show, she still had these kits left. Nobody bought them. And she said, I, if you would like to buy one, I would sell it to you for 25 So I was like, sold. So I bought it for 25 and I stitched on it off and on for years. And I finally just finished it. I didn't have that much left. But I had gotten a little spot, you can see it over the top word there, a little spot of blue something. So, and I was super careful about my back. Please witness the neat back. Well, I mean, it's pretty neat. It's really Pretty neat neat. Mm -hmm. um, to try to, because it was white fabric, I didn't want to show through. But then I got that spot on it and I couldn't get it out. So then I was like, all right, we're tea dyeing this. So I put it on a tray, a cookie tray, and I wet it down with a spray of water. And then I... Oh, I, well, did I tea dye it first? I might have t- dunked it first in coffee dye, but then I wanted to give it kind of a grainy look. Mm-hmm. Sprinkled um, instant coffee grounds on it and popped it in the oven at like 200 degrees. And I went and opened it back up and it had gotten, kind of gotten sludgy looking and like real beaded up and stuff. And I was like, ooh, that's not good. <laughs> so I took it out and I quick rinsed it in the sink. And I was like, okay, but now it's not grungy enough again. So I did that three more times. Like just put, I just got crazy with it. And by the end, <laughs> I put so much coffee on it that I um, had it under the water. You guys would just die if you saw what I was doing, but I had it under the faucet and I took dish soap and I went like this. And then I was like, like squeezing it and squeezing the water out. But look at how cool it looks. It looks really good. It looks like a really old sampler. It is. But it was, sometimes you got to be brave. You got to just try it. Piece. Super cool. And then this one is a Barbara Anna piece. Jennifer challenged me um, last time we did a sleepover to start seven projects. I started three, but I have finished one already. Barbara Anna, and I don't remember the name of this one, but it's very, very cute. It's, I don't like, Funky Bird maybe or something. I love that one. Just DMC on a piece of hand-dyed linen I bought um, from a fabric dyer on eBay. Pretty, pretty. I'm going to stitch that one. This one is... I did not stitch. My friend Kathy stitched it for me. Jennifer, Kathy, Sue, and I are, have all been doing exchanges. And we're doing a sampler exchange right now. And this was the one that I just got from Kathy. And it's a prairie schooler. And I think this one, was it just re-released? Is this in the spring samplers maybe? Maybe so. But um, her backs are very neat. Yeah. But um, it, she did hers on a 40 count even weave. And it's very pretty in DMC. It is pretty. And then I had a prairie schooler piece that... I had almost finished, and this one I think was just re-released. Yeah, that's the garden sampler. The garden sampler. I love that. This was fun to stitch, and I, um, it's mostly DMC, but I threw a couple of just limited edition um, Gentle Arts colors in there for interest, and it's turned out really pretty. It's on 40 Count Natural, um, and this, we have the greatest little frame shop here in Hattiesburg. We were really lucky. This little frame is a custom frame. It was $24, and 
they like me there. And so they, I don't think they charged me for the foam core or anything. They no. just are like, here you go. But so there's that. That's really nice. Um, this is a recent finish. This was my piece I took to work for a long time. And I finally finished it for during my lunch breaks. And um, it's Samsara. I don't remember what it's called. Isn't it Garden Vegetables? I think it's just Garden Vegetables. I don't know. It might be. But it was fun to stitch. It's in overdyed threads. I didn't use the buttons that um, Patty used. I used some Jabco buttons that I had. Um, and it's on 30 count straw. And the frame, again, was super, like, maybe $30 custom frame. I, so I showed it to my husband. I'm like, look at my piece. Isn't this cute? And he goes, Sp spells poop. And I was like, what? And P, onion, okra, pepper spells poop. And then I was like, yeah, it says BG poop, which is big giant poop. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you could mix yours up if that's going to bother you. But it, it, was, it was really fun Sarah, to stitch. Sarah's going to Thanks a lot, Teresa. Yeah. And then this is my last finish. Um, fairly recent. I finished it, I think, in the spring, maybe. And it's a Brenda Gervais. And I don't remember the name of this one. Do you have this in your shop? It's October 31st. You have it? I'm, it's in, in my shop? whip. But do you yeah, have it in your shop? I think so. Okay. I will look If not, she might be it. she might be able to get it. But it's I stitched this on a piece of 40 count, I think, R and R fabric that I had. Again, it's in overdyed threads. It's very, very here, let me hold it closer so you can really see it. It's very pretty. And the frame is really neat. I got it at Neblitz too. It kind of has almost like a, a bug eaten, wormy wood where it's really irregular kind of markings. Um, it is a veneer frame. It was a little more expensive than the other two, but it was really worth it because it just is a gorgeous old looking frame. And this was fun. This is something I like to stitch is things so you can see how the borders change. So it's not the same border all the way around and you've got lots of little elements to finish and the colors just are really pleasing. It was super fun to stitch. It's very, very pretty. I'm looking, I'm looking. I don't think I have that one right now. But okay. I can but let her it. know because she could maybe get you one. Do you want to show some of your... Um, so I constantly talk about... And if you've watched my whip parade, I've talked about Jeanette Douglas and her um, stitches series that I like. So I, I don't think I've shown these. So here are my finished examples with the dust. With the dust. So with I dust. have these hanging in um, essentially my kitchen area. So this is the vintage stitches, which is great. So so pretty. pretty. And every one of them has that kind of chain border and then it has inner borders and has all these specialty stitches and I think um Katie the stash queen is stitching this is one of hers that she had started and what do you like about doing these like, well it's just that her instructions are so good it's like do the out outer border then do the corners and then she's do got this. stitch diagrams and, and everything is a unique mm -hmm. type of stitch that's it's not just cross stitch so like this down here this bottom border is adorable and, you know, you've got this little interesting, what is this kind of stitch called? Oh, um, it's like, yeah, it's, um, not a Montenegrin cross, but, a, but um, just all kinds of specialty stitches. Mm -hmm. And I know, um, oh, Miska Cat has done several of these as well. Yeah. Super pretty, pretty colors. And then the thread packs, you can get the thread packs. Yeah. to go with them and it comes with everything that you need and it's way cheaper than buying individual skeins yeah. of everything so even though the thread pack might be 40 or 50 dollars it's way cheaper, cheaper and it can help you get through that project that There's one's very pretty stitches. tell me if i get it in there you go so looks nice so pretty and this frame i got at a uh, garage sale and i thought it was perfect, perfect because it's kind of a pinky gold mm -hmm. that matches that mm -hmm. Here's one of the first ones that I stitched. It's this um, one, that one's really pomegranate pretty. and pears. Is that in yep. the frame? Pretty colors. So same kind of thing. It's got all the specialty threads and stitches and beads and just it's fun to stitch. And they all fit into an eight by ten frame. Every one of them, if you stitch it on the thirty-two count, it fits into an eight by ten. Yeah. So you can get the frame. I've got this at Hobby Lobby for twelve bucks. So I used I got waited until they were half off. <laughs> So, I mean, it's reasonable. You know, when you stitch something that has a lot of silks yeah. and everything, it's expensive. And then you think, well, what am I going to do afterwards? At least this way, you're going to be yeah. able to fit it into a frame that's mm -hmm. that's easy to acquire. That one's really this pretty. The frame on that one's really pretty, too. So, you want to see my 
backing back. <laughs> yeah, and I've done that too. You can use, uh, if you need to back quick backing, just use wrapping paper. I don't back a lot of my stuff anymore. Who cares? Yeah, and then this is pineapple stitches, which I love. That's really cute. So I have five of these hanging in the corner of our, so we have um, in our kitchen area, we have a dining area. And so they kind of, it's, they hang in the corner. And then the, what is it called? Vintage stitches mm -hmm. actually is over where we have all of our wine. So which ones do you have to finish yet? Apple stitches, pumpkin stitches, strawberry stitches. I bought and thistle stitches and Quaker stitches. So. Isn't there one that's by the sea also? There's like one that's got like a ship on it or something. Mm -hmm. There and is there's, one, yeah. yeah. And then there's silver, there's a silver needle, needle one stitches. too. Yeah. So. They're pretty. Yeah. She's talented and she's very sweet. Well, I think we've gone through everything. No, we haven't. Because I have more. Oh. Okay, so. Whip. Did you bring any whips? I, you, I you, think they're sick of my whips. They're sick of your whips. This is Hannah Pepper, and this is what I brought Isn't to stitch beautiful? on at Jennifer's house. Here, bring it this way some. Like this. And it was um, in the Fine Lines magazine, and let me tell you what issues, just in case you're going to go try to find it. Summer 2002, Fall 2002, and Winter 2003. And here you can see the original is here, and this is their reproduction here. I wanted mine to look more like the original, kind of faded colors. They kind of picked brighter. This is how their reproduction looks. And they did, they used like cream fabric and red thread and green thread. And it's pretty, but it's not antique looking. Yeah. So I switched to just threads that, miscellaneous threads that I had, and it's really fun to stitch. And then last time, you might remember, I showed this that I got at market, and I was so excited. And Jennifer had challenged me to start pieces, so I did. I went ahead and started. And, of course, in the middle, you get to start with the most fun thing, which is that B-Skep. And he is really, really cute. So pretty. All right. All right. Well, that's all we got for today. Else? Thanks for spending time with us. Hope we went oh, too no, annoying. Oh, no, we've got to talk about the Oh, we got one more thing. So Wait, my, okay. my, younger son, I mean, my older son and I like to go thrift store shopping. So Wednesday, today's Saturday. So Wednesday, we went down to the Gulf Coast, um, down south Mississippi and went to a bunch of thrift stores and I didn't find anything really but I found this bag. It's a Vera Bradley bag and I paid 10 how much did I pay for it? 10.99 and it is perfect for carrying cross stitch. So that afternoon when I got back I was telling Teresa about it and she asked me I said what well, yeah what'd you get? And I told her I got this really neat bag Vera Bradley and it's got browns and or I said orange. But this, Just, yeah. Yeah. Means, yeah. And so I took a picture and sent it to her, and then she responded with a picture of the same <laughs> bag. <laughs> we have the same bag. Yeah. She was like, she sent me a picture, and I went, I think I have, like, not only do we have the same pattern, we have the same bag. She found hers at a thrift store. I think I got mine as a gift, because yeah. somebody was like, oh, Teresa, this looks like you. Look at how cute the inside is. Yeah. But the great thing about Vera Bradley bags, and I'm sure you've all got one by this point in your life is that you can totally wash them. Yeah. And they they wash up great. And this is, it's got this big pocket on the side with a zipper. It's and perfect. it's a perfect size for full-size chart, thread fabric, get the little handle. And then I became obsessed with looking. I didn't think about it because I know I want one of those. I forget what Bonna calls it, but Bonna has the little thing that's got the little lid on it. It's Vera Bradley. Oh, I don't know if I've has, seen that. And she keeps all of her sewing tools in it. It's so pretty. Like I'm like, I want to be like Bonna. I want to be those. like Bonna. And um, I looked and didn't find anything like that. But I found this one. Mm -hmm. but so, I'm gonna just once looking. again, we are so much the same. I know. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so, well, even last night with a question, I'm like, you know what question you need to ask? You need to add something about what scares you or what you, what's your biggest fear? What's your biggest phobia? Yeah. And I was like, that is so weird. She, that is so weird. I literally just wrote what scares you. Yeah. But it's yeah it's crazy but so it's thanks for hanging out with us yes. a lot of you last time said like oh i wish i had friends to hang out with and hang out with us yeah. virtually on youtube and we have to figure out how to do one of those kind like of virtual, virtual stitch along or whatever what but, meetups but we're glad we're glad that you spent time with us and and we hope that you had fun and yeah um, just leave comments because it's fun to read what you guys have to say and if you have questions leave those too yeah um, it's been fun to do sleepovers with Jen. I don't know why we never did them before. It doesn't make any sense. But you're never too old to have a sleepover. That's right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.